Well, thanks for joining our video, everybody. My name is Dave Lenthic. I'm the founder and CTO of Blue Mountain Labs. And today we're going to talk about the future of cloud computing in this presentation entitled, Are You Ready for the Future of Cloud Computing? Just some shameless self-promotion first. Um, Blue Mountain is leading the conversation uh, with thought leadership and cutting-edge services on around the emerging world of cloud computing. Uh, we have a book out on cloud computing called uh, Cloud Computing and Silicon Convergence. We have a blog on InfoWorld. Cloud Computing Blog, and also the podcast, uh, Cloud Computing Podcast, which is about to hit show episode uh, 200, so check those out. Topics we're going to cover today are, number one, the big picture, where we are now with cloud computing, uh, this being 2012, merging cloud computing trends, what the future holds for cloud computing, and where to invest your time and money. And, of course, QA on the end, but obviously it's a video, so we're not going to be able to do that. And now the big picture. So looking at cloud computing, it's really kind of an emergence of lots of things that have occurred in the past. We've had the data centers emerge, you know, in the 1940s and, the, you know, through the 1960s, and then we had the rise of time sharing. The ability to, oh, charge people for using um, your computer via time, you know, very much like we built for, um, for telephone services at the time, long distance services at least. And then we saw the movement into internet-based computing and the rise of cloud and the rise of the internet, such as the rise of the PC, which we saw during the 80s, rise of client server, or basically to leverage PCs in enterprise-y, you know, kind of application ways. And we certainly made a big hay out of that. Then the rise of the web, uh, which occurred, you know, in the in starting in the mid-90s and still occurring today. And then uh, off of that was the rise of the cloud, the ability to basically leverage external services or things that are delivered as a service, such as storage, uh, such as compute services, which are paid for very much like the time sharing model, you know, per drink as you use it. And kind of that's where we are today. Now let's move forward. So moving forward, we are seeing the rise of big data, basically the emergence of cloud computing the, uh, with the commodity processing power to manage petabytes of information as we need to manage that information. And certainly the Hadoop stuff is driving a lot of that. And that seems to be a big enterprise focus right now because people are trying to get their data under control. And if there's one place where you can stick your data in one big bucket and manage the data still, it's in a manageable state and get information you need out of it, then that's, a, that's important. So the BI information data warehousing things are moving off in that direction. We're also seeing the rise of home clouds. People are, you know, leveraging iCloud in the uh, iCloud and other cloud-based services, certainly, certainly Google, certainly Yahoo, you know, certainly all these other things in the consumer areas. So anybody who carries around a mobile device is leveraging some sort of cloud and that seems to be rising whether people know it or not. Then the rise of IT in a box, the ability to deliver IT as a service, which uh, can come in the form of cloud-based systems along with human beings that are, are going to be able to remotely support you. Therefore, you can launch a company or restructure a company to be much more cost-efficient in how you consume IT. And that's really kind of the whole IT on demand thing. Um, rise of commodity data services. I see you know, that occurring where people are able to get at any piece of information anywhere and be able to integrate that piece of information into their applications via very sophisticated you know, on-demand APIs. And then I think in 2016, we're going to be at about 5%, maybe 10%, you know, average cloud-based systems uh, in, within the enterprise. But I think the big migration is going to begin around then. So people are going to be comfortable with it, figure out security, figure out privacy compliance issues, and then they're going to start migrating their systems to the cloud as fast and furious as they can. And then the rise of shared enterprise business services, the ability to basically share all of these various data, you know, behavior and compute services in between these enterprises as we need to share them. So anyway, that's my vision for the future, and we'll see if I'm right. So where are we now with cloud computing? Let's find out. Well, first, let's reflect on the hype. Uh, and this is kind of what we're seeing out there. Gartner, cloud computing revenue will soar faster than expected. will exceed $150 billion within five years. I buy that. That's a pretty conservative uh, guesstimate kind of based on what I'm seeing from the analyst communities out there and certainly um, you know it's not throwing everything in anything around the cloud computing buzzword like some of the vendors have a tendency to do. Forrester cloud-based email is often cheaper than on-premise email. I think that's a no-brainer. Uh, Vivek Kundra, CTO of the Obama government now works for Salesforce.com. The growing adoption of cloud computing can improve data sharing and promote collaboration among federal, state, 
local governance, government, excuse me. And then Merrill Lynch by 2011, the volume of cloud computing market opportunity would amount to about 160 billion, including 95 billion in business productivity apps, email office, and 65 billion in online advertising. IDC spending on IT cloud services will triple in the next five years, reaching, reaching 42 billion and capturing 25% of IT spending growth in 2012. So anyway, it's uh, upward trending, let's put it that way. So the latest news, is uh, obviously Amazon's blowing the doors off in terms of their growth and if you look at the objects stored in S3 you know that's an indication of revenue uh, hopefully they're charging for that for these guys and uh, they're they're hitting about a billion dollar company so they're obviously the 800 pound gorilla in the cloud computing space and they're kind of you know blowing the doors off in terms of uh, exponential growth and if you think about it we're just starting so Amazon's got some inflection to go and then a number of other companies chasing Amazon such as Raxis and Oh, a hundred other little cloud companies out there, and you certainly have Salesforce.com in the software as a service space, and right now, as well as um, you know, Net uh, NetSuite, and just a number of very large, uh, very profitable cloud computing companies out there. And just real quickly, the summary summary of the major vendor emphases: um, Amazon, Salesforce, Google, Microsoft, IBM, VMware, Oracle, SAP, Cisco, and HP. And that's kind of who's who and the big cloud guys. Um, Microsoft with Azure, you know, Google with a storage offering, and of course, at least of course, they have their productivity apps and uh, as a service, and Salesforce with their enterprise applications as a service. Amazon with their infrastructure as a service, as a service. Uh, VMware with internal virtualization in the private cloud market, and they offer a variety of different uh, packages, including you know the bigger guys, you know, just basically. At, on demand out of the cloud, you know, such as Google, Salesforce, and Amazon, and then a number of other people sell software as well. Uh, so they sell private cloud solutions as well as public cloud solutions. So the growth of cloud computing um, looks like this, and this is from a friend of mine, uh, Diane, uh, Diane Hinchcliffe, and uh, it's growing exponentially, present day, and uh, basically infrastructure and computing fabric and you know, virtual instances and block storage and key storage and all these other things that are occurring after that. So we'll see how it emerges, but obviously, as we saw with the hype, it's all the estimates that it's going to grow by leaps and bounds. It's kind of a no-brainer right now. So, emerging cloud computing trends. Well, we're moving from talking about cloud to doing cloud. So there's a lot of projects that are being geared up and people are moving as quickly as they can into the cloud computing space. The pilot projects are starting to ramp up and people are doing strategies, those sorts of things. Government are entering the cloud computing game now. Uh, they kind of beat their chest about it back in 2008. Didn't do a ton. Uh, now they seem to be uh, moving uh, slowly and steadily into cloud. Uh, security continues to be a priority, of course, uh, within these organizations. It becomes the biggest impediment to implementing cloud of security and privacy. And it control issues as well. People like to hug their servers. Little or no expertise in corporate and IT government. IT out there and that seems to be a talent shortage issue and you know one of the things we do at Blue Mountain is we provide uh, you know staff augmentation the ability to assist you in mentoring these projects and get things up and running so consider us if you're you know running into a talent lag uh, we can get you jump started even if you want to basically maintain those resources yourself ultimately so moving to infrastructure as a service and platforms as a, and then platform as a service seems to be the pattern and leading with private clouds but public clouds are you know are uh, basically the destination and of course the rise of big data and we talked about that. So why the focus on the data? Well I think that data seems to be a, a common systemic problem within these organizations. People figure need to figure out how to get their <coughs> excuse me enterprise data assets uh, under better control and obviously you know Hadoop and other technologies are able to manage petabytes of information are able to do that for them. So that seems to be the focus right now. So if you look at some of the, so if you look at some of the big data trends, uh, data aggregation in the cloud for common analytics within vertical seems to be the trend right now. People want to use the big data for basically getting to the analytical states which they couldn't get to in the past, ability to determine value or what their data is doing and the state of the business and all these other sorts of things that uh, have a tendency to be a focus uh, within any vertical, whether it's manufacturing, healthcare retail, government, and then combining enterprise data into common data sets uh, is another focus, the ability to kind of take these silos and break them down and move them into a common set of data, and then providing mission critical BI, and that's really about data warehousing or the ability to look at the value of information either within an operational state 
are within a decision support state. So where are we, uh, where are we now with cloud computing? Well, this is a NIST definition of cloud computing, and I put this in my book, and it's still apt today. You know, five characteristics, on-demand self-service, ubiquitous network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, pay-per-use, delivery models, SaaS, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and the deployment models, private community, public, and hybrid. Uh, however, the market is kind of growing uh, not away from those definitions, but certainly segmenting within those definitions. And I kind of look at it like this. So delivery models morphing would be, you know, software as a service. We have applications as a service, utilities as a service, connected and disconnected apps. Obviously, we have to use these on airplanes. Uh, platform as a service, design as a service, app design, process as a service, the ability to manage business processes within the cloud, uh, testing as a service, the ability to test out of the cloud, infrastructure as a service. We're getting into databases as a service, and certainly Amazon and Google, everybody. And Microsoft supports databases out of the cloud, management as a service, ability to manage your infrastructure, middleware as a service, ability to communicate between your silos, integration as a service, the ability to integrate various source and targets, move information between your silos, and then information as a service, and more. Um, ultimately, um, there's a ton of different characteristics in how we're breaking this thing out. So I look at this as this new stack emerging. So we have testing as a service, management governance as a service, applications as a service, things I talked about in the previous slide. And what's y your takeaway here is that the segmentation of the market is kind of moving away from very broad strokes and very broad categories into particular sets of things where there's lots of organizations in there, lots of thought leadership that are in those particular segments, you know, such as infrastructure as a service and process as a service. So it becomes kind of a focused discipline unto itself. And so it's very difficult to kind of take everything and anything and throw it into a category these days. There's lots of cross-pollination between the, uh, the way in which you want to categorize this technology. So I think a stack like this is going to be a bit more apt uh, going forward in terms of how we're going to look at cloud computing. What the future holds for cloud computing. Well, this is the Gartner hype cycle, and you know one of the things to note about this is, um, you know, we've seen these many times before, is that everybody and anybody is kind of signed on to it. So we have advertising as a service, and uh, dedicated email services, and cloud advertising, and and all these sorts of things, real-time infrastructure, and public cloud storage, and you know, which really are thrown into the cloud computing bucket. So ultimately, um, we're coming to a few conclusions via things like this. First, the buzzword cloud computing is absorbed into computing. I think that ultimately we're, so many things in the computing world are basically renamed as cloud computing. It's okay to absorb them uh, into computing, and we may not talk about cloud computing in a few years, it's just computing. Focus on, focuses on fit and function and not the hype, and so people are trying to figure out what's going to work within their enterprise and make it work within their enterprise. Security moves into centralized trust model. You know, we're getting into identity management-based systems, the ability to validate these identities against a centralized uh, you know, database of identities uh, seems to be the direction in which we're moving. Centralized data becomes a key strategic advantage. Ultimately, mobilized devi mobile devices become more powerful, but then, and that's always been the case over the last few years, and then ultimately the rise of the composite cloud, the ability to basically build clouds out of other clouds, and we're learning how to do that these days. So where to invest your time and money? Well, number one, focus on the reorganization and outplacement of data. We talked about that with the big data stuff. Focus on platforms as a service and service companies that are good at platform as a service. You know, focus on centralized trust, including moving to identity management models. That's a big one right now. So patterns in technology, new value in the cloud, certainly. You know, we're SOA geeks at Blue Mountain, and ultimately SOA is the best way to get in the cloud, and people are kind of repurposing the whole service-oriented architecture stuff for making it work within cloud computing. Continue to focus on mobile computing, and Home cloud, ZG iCloud, create, uh, uh, for example, iCloud, create a new track for application and appliance development, and that's going to be a whole market into itself. And then the rise of the cloud aggregators, the ability to basically leverage clouds within clouds and leverage technology to make this stuff, uh, uh, to, to aggregate the technology to form the solutions you're looking to form. So finally, here it is. We're leading the conversation with thought leadership and cutting edge services on cloud computing. Uh, check out my book, Cloud Computing and SOA Convergence in Your Enterprise, a step-by-step -step guide. Check out the blog, and don't forget to check out the podcast. You guys take care. Thank you.